Hello and welcome to the Celtic Skies Sky Update, your guide to what's happening in the night sky over the coming month. If you know little or nothing about astronomy and you don't own a telescope or binoculars but would still like to know what is going on in the universe around us, then this video is for you. Sometimes I may use a term or introduce a phrase that you are unfamiliar with. If I don't give any further explanations, you will see this letter I and text box appear in the top corner of this video. Simply click this and you will see a drop down menu with further explanation videos that you can watch. By simply running a cursor over the top corner of the screen at any time, you can access these videos. This month we'll be looking at the regular lunar monthly events, the spring equinox and how Easter time is calculated, we will take a special look this month at the actual size of some of the nighttime stars. And finally, we take a brief look at some of the visible planets. And so, without further ado, let's crack on. As the Moon continues to orbit the Earth, it will go through its many phases. On the 5th of March, we will observe the first quarter. The night sky will be lit up by the full Moon on the 12th. We will see the third quarter in the sky on the 20th of March and the new moon will be on the 28th. Since the orbit of the moon is elliptical in shape, the distance between the Earth and the moon is varying constantly. The point on the orbit where it is closest to the Earth is known as the point of perigee and the point it is furthest from the Earth is called the point of apogee. In March, the moon will reach the point of perigee on the 3rd, a little after half 7 in the morning, when it will be a little over 369,000 kilometres from the Earth. On the 18th, the Moon will reach the point of apogee, when the 20-day-old Moon will be 404,650 kilometres from the Earth. And because a calendar month is longer than the lunar orbit period, in March, the Moon passes the point of perigee a second time, this time on the 30th of March, at 2 in the afternoon, when it will be 363,854 kilometres from the Earth. In a previous video, we described how the Earth's axis is tilted to the plane of its orbit around the Sun. From the animation we can see that sometimes the north pole of the axis is tilted towards the sun while the southern tip is tilted away from it. Maximum tilt occurs at the summer solstice. On the opposite side of the orbital plane, the situation is reversed at the winter solstice. But in between these two states, we reach a point where the north and south poles are equidistant from the sun and at that moment in time, Day and night are exactly 12 hours each, all over the planet. These points are known as the equinoxes, the autumn equinox and the spring equinox. At the spring equinox, the northern hemisphere begins to enter the longer, warmer summer days, but in the southern hemisphere, winter beckons. But on this one day, we are all, north and south, equidistant from the summer and winter. The spring equinox this year occurs on the 20th of March at 6.29 am. And for those interested in calculating the timing of Easter, Easter Sunday is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. The spring equinox as we know is the 20th of March. The next full moon after this is the 11th of April. The next Sunday after this is the 16th of April, which is Easter Sunday. When we look at the stars in the night sky, all we can see are pinpoints of light. Apart from some colour variation, they all look a similar tiny size. The Sun, on the other hand, looks large and imposing, but to paraphrase Father Ted, the Sun is relatively small, but close, 
whereas some of the stars are far more massive but further away. As discussed in a previous video, Orion is one of the main winter constellations and when we look in that area of the sky, we are looking at some fantastically huge stars. It can be difficult to grasp the size of these monstrous bodies, so let's create a usable scale and climb up it, one star at a time. Now to kick us off and create the scale, we must first look at a planet, our planet, Earth. The Earth is 12,742 kilometres in diameter, which makes it a very big lump of rock. So let's say we create a new scale-down universe and in this universe the Earth is the size of a common garden pea. So how big would some of the other stellar bodies be compared to a pea-sized Earth? How about Jupiter? Well, the largest planet in the solar system is 139,882 kilometres in diameter which in our scale-down universe makes it about the size of a grapefruit compared to our P. So it's a pretty big planet. And our Sun? Well, our star is 1,391,400 kilometres in diameter. If you were to take all the planets in the solar system and combine them into one mega planet, it would be about 1% of the size of the Sun. In our scale-down universe, the Sun would be a little over a metre wide, about the height of a four or five-year-old. Imagine a five-year-old stepping on a pea. He wouldn't even notice. Right, now that we have established our new scale, let's look at some of the stars in the neighbourhood of Orion. Ceres, which is in the constellation of Canis Major, the great dog, and is the brightest star in the sky after our Sun, is two million kilometres in diameter. In our scale-down universe it would be about 1.5 metres wide or tall. About the height of an average 12-year-old. You might say it is the older brother of our Sun and we are only getting started. To the left of Orion is Aldebaran in the constellation of Taurus. This giant of a star is 62 million kilometres in diameter. Even in our scale-down universe, this is big, about 49 metres high, which means it would tower over London's Tower Bridge. About 30 million of our suns would fit into Aldebaran if it was hollowed out. But if you think that's big, then consider the red giant of Orion, Betelgeuse. This gargantuan star is 1.5 billion kilometres in diameter, the la this large, red, swollen beast is near the end of its life. We have to zoom way out to fit this into our scale-down universe. Here it is still an impressive 1.2 kilometres in diameter, making it taller than Caron Thul, Ireland's tallest mountain. And remember, this sun is a mountain where our entire planet is the size of a pea. So the next time you are looking up toward Orion and its neighbouring constellations, remember, they are more than just pins of light that you are looking at. On the night of March 14th, at about 9 o'clock, the Moon and Jupiter will rise together in the eastern sky. The pair will make a lovely sight as they travel southward rising to a maximum height of about 30 degrees above the horizon. If you look closely you will see that they make an impressive triangle with the star Spica, which is the brightest star in the constellation Virgo. Early in the morning of March 20th at about 5.15 shortly before sunrise, the Moon and Saturn will make a beautiful sight. They will be separated by a mere 3 degrees and the pair are about 13 to 16 degrees above the horizon. Saturn is much dimmer than Jupiter and sometimes is more difficult to identify, but its location so close to the moon on the morning of the 20th will assist you in identifying this beautiful planet. 
Also be sure to watch out for Venus, which is the bright star-like object in the western sky after sunset. Through binoculars you will see Venus, over time, go through phases just like the moon. This is because the planet lies between us and the sun. And finally, don't forget that the clocks go forward one hour on March 26th at 1am. And that's it for another month. I hope you enjoyed our journey through the March skies and found it informative. The aim of these guides is to try and promote an interest in science through astronomy. Therefore, please feel free to pass the link to my Sky Update video channel to anyone who you think might be interested. So until next month's update, I wish you clear skies.